guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Karthik and this is session 4 on the topic of Hadoop Administration and Operations. Now in the previous session, we discussed the basics of file system, disk sectors and HDFS. Now in this session, we will be digging deeper into the Hadoop distributed file system and discuss the various components that make it up. Now the HDFS has two main components, the name node which is like a master service and the data node which is like a slave service. Apart from these two, there are several other supporting components which I will be covering that perform one or the other supporting roles in the HDFS framework. One such example is the secondary name group. Now in this session, I will be covering these three components which is sufficient for setting up a single name node HDFS setup. However, in the next session where I will be covering name node high availability, we will be covering a few more components in addition to these three. Now the main HDFS configuration file is the HDFS site.xml. You can find the details about all the parameters and their default values in this page at hadoop.pache.org. I would suggest to keep this handy as it will help you to troubleshoot and understand how to tweak the various parameter and behavior of HDFS in a production environment. Now for the lab demos, I'll be using the same Apache Hadoop system which we used in the previous session. Again, I'll be including the link to the video series on how to set up your own Apache Hadoop cluster. Now the name node is the master service and is one of the most important component of the HDFS framework. It stores two very important information for the file system. The first is the entire file system state or what we call as the file system namespace. This includes the directory structure, information of files and their blocks, also metadata information of files like permission, owner, modification date, etc. Second is the block address information which is basically a table that maps the HDFS block to the node where they are located. It tells HDFS on which node can it find a certain HDFS block on the Hadoop cluster. Now the HDFS is an in-memory file system, which means the name node stores all this information in its random access memory. This hugely benefits HDFS performance as reads and writes to RAM is way faster than hard disk. This enables HDFS to handle thousands of transactions per second, that too with the additional overhead of managing data across hundreds of nodes. Now this approach is simple and effective. However, you can immediately sense the problem here. RAM, unlike hard disk, is a volatile memory, which means in an event of system reboot or power failure, the data stored in RAM is lost forever. Hence, the name node will maintain a snapshot of its in-memory namespace information in its local hard disk. It stores this information in a file called as fs image. Now this file is stored on your name node whose directory path can be specified in the HDFS configuration file. Now whenever the name node restarts or reboots, the latest fs image from the hard disk is first loaded onto the memory to recreate the point in time state of the file system. Hence it is important that the fs image contains the up-to-date information of the file system state and be in continuous sync with the in-memory file system state. Now, whenever a transaction happens on the file system, two things has to happen. First, of course, it is updated to the in-memory namespace. And second, it has to be updated to the FS image on the disk. Only then can the transaction be marked as successful. Now, transaction in file system terminology can be any event in the file system, be it creation, deletion or modification of directories, addition of files, changing of permissions, etc. Now, over time, FS image can become a really large file. This along with the fact that on a heavily utilized system, there can be thousands of transactions every second, makes it highly impractical to repeatedly open the large FS image file, update the new file system state, and then save and close it again, thousand times every second. Apart from the obvious delays, opening and closing repeatedly large files like FS image might also lead to data corruption. Now this is where the edit files comes into picture, which is basically a WAL or write ahead log file. Now the concept of using write ahead logs is extremely popular even on high performance database systems. Now each new transaction on HDFS is not directly updated to the FS image, but is dumped in the form of logs into the edit files. Each new transaction is appended to these edit files in the form of simple logs or records. This technique helps HDFS to cope up with the thousands of transactions as it is no longer required to repeatedly update the whole file system state in FS image, rather each transaction can simply be updated as sequence of logs. This is both simple and doable even on highly utilized systems. Now here is my single node Apache Hadoop system. I have already started the HDFS services on the server. 
uh, as you can see we currently have these three HDFS components running on the server that is the name node data node and the secondary name node and these are the process ID for each of these Java components now in this demo I just want to show you the edit logs the FS image file and where they are stored on the system the parameter that decides the path of these files can be found in the HDFS site.xml uh, configuration file if you go here the property that decides this can be found under the name no, name dot yeah, yeah this is the one so this property uh, dfs dot name node dot name dot dir uh, actually decides the path or the directory path under which the name node should store the fs image as you can see here determines where on the local file system dfs name node should store the name table or the fs image now if this is comma delimited list of directories then the name table is replicated in all the directories for redundancy so basically it means that you can mention more than one directory path using commas uh, for redundancy so the name node will uh, replicate the fs image on all the all those paths so basically usually we have separate disks or partitions on which we store the fs image so even if one disk goes down you still have a copy or a backup on the other disk now one more property is the dfs.namenode.edits.dir uh, this uh, is used to configure the path where you want to store your edit edit log files however if you don't uh, mention this property by default it will use the same path that you mention in the name.dir now let us check what path we have configured on our system. So you need to open the HDFS site.xml file. Yeah, under this HDFS site.xml. Okay. Now, as you can see, the property dfs .name .name dir the path that we have configured is slash hadoop slash disk one slash name. So uh, we have configured this path to be used by the name node to store the fs image as we have not configured the edit uh, edits directory the name node will be using the same path to store edits uh, logs as well now let us move into the directory that we have configured which is hadoop disk one name now here you need to move inside current and if I list all the files inside this directory, you can find the edits and the FS image here. Now edits are basically running logs, which uh, the HDFS uses to record all the file system events. The FS image on the other hand stores the point in time file system state of HDFS. Now these are what we call as the finalized edit segments. Uh, and this the edits in progress is the in progress edit segment that is currently being used by HDFS to update all the file system events the number at the end is the transaction ID uh, so basically this means currently we have a total of 413 transactions on our HDFS system which is not much and not surprising since this is uh, basically an idle system used only for lab purpose Again, uh, the, there are two FS image and the latest one is this one, which you can uh, see from the transaction ID. So the FS image, which has the latest transaction ID is the updated one. So now there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys. If you check the size of the edits in progress file, you can see that it shows as one MB. Well, this doesn't mean that the edits in progress has one MB of data. The HDFS basically pre-allocates the space for the edits in progress file in multiples of 1 MB. It then fills it up with the incoming transactions. However, uh, when the HDFS finalizes the edits in progress log segment or closes the in progress log segment, it truncates the unused portion of the space that doesn't contain any transaction. So these finalized segments will only occupy space in relation to the amount of transaction data they store uh, and won't necessarily occupy the whole 1MB space. You can actually check this using uh, the du command to check the size of any of these finalized segments. So let us check this one. 
you can see that it, it's just consuming 8 KB of space, which is uh, far less than 1 MB. Now, as I've already explained earlier, the HDFS updates all file system transactions to the edits in progress file segment and holds it open. It does not directly update it to the FS image. You can actually check this using the lsof command, uh, which is a Linux command to list all open files. And just search it for edits. Uh, since this will be a long output, I will just search the output for edit. And here you can see there are multiple outputs. All of them uh, show that the edits in progress file has been opened by a Java process with the process ID 4481. Well, you, you, you are seeing so many outputs because there are several thread IDs. One process can have multiple threads. However, you can skip that for now. Uh, the important thing is the process ID, which is 4481. This is the process that is keeping, that is, or holding the edits in progress open. And if you see, the process is none other than the name node. You can see the process ID 4481. So the name node is keeping or holding this edits in progress open. If you search the same for FS image, I'm sure you won't get any output. Right, so if you do an LSOF and search for FS image, there is no output, which shows that the name node only updates the ed edits in progress and does not directly update the FS image.